I think he's improving every day. We'll just see where it ends up. Improving every day. We'll see where it ends up. I know Ted finished the game. Is everything good with him? Is he, is he feeling good today? Yeah, he felt good enough to finish the game. And so, again, we'll, we'll continue to get rest these next two days and see where we're at on Wednesday. What was the key yesterday, Zach, to the rhythm that your offense started with? Well, I think um, both sides of the ball starting fast. The defense getting two stops. Um, their first two possessions, and the offense put the 14 points on the board. So just the complimentary aspect of that um, allowed us to, to gain some control of the game early on, and, and everyone just fed off of that for the rest of the game. When, when your offense starts like that and you're watching from the sideline and it's at a very, very high level, does it feel like a walkthrough, like when the execution is that good? No. No? No. Um, no, you're still solving problems, and – trying to anticipate um, what their next move would be and what ours needs to be. So uh, it also doesn't feel like I'm watching anything. It feels like you're, you're you know, solving a puzzle every step of the way. So, but our guys executed at a really high level. And um, you know, I, thought, yeah, I thought yards after contact was critical for our guys, whether it was you know, guys making, making people miss or, or just dragging people for an extra two or three yards. So many times you anticipate calling a second six play as you're seeing the contact happen, and all of a sudden, you know, Brian's told me it's second two. You know, and that's that's usually because guys just were really physical yards after contact, and that was critical. That was something Brian had challenged these guys um, going in and one of our keys to victory, and, and the guys held that up for us. Zach, was this your most complete game? I don't know. I mean, we've we've had a lot of great wins here, and and it felt, felt like a good team effort in all three phases to manage the conditions in the kicking game. Um, to come out and, and they've got one of the most explosive offenses in the league so I thought our defense really um, stepped up and showed who they are and then offensively uh, you know just scored on most of our possessions and really the ball possession the time of possession was good as well you know allowed our defense to get some rest and allowed us to eat up some clock and score points and so um, you know I don't really compare the games to the other games we've played but um, I thought it was really good complimentary team effort does this lay a foundation of confidence potentially for your starting line now, given that three of the current starters were not starters? We, we've had confidence throughout. You know, I think it's everybody else who wants to create a narrative of no confidence. That, that has never existed with us. How important did you think Cam Till and Britt's play at the end on the game to Gabe Davis where he got beat but then didn't stop trying to knock the ball out? Yeah, yeah, huge. Yeah, improving, uh, improving every step of the way. You know, he's he's passionate about it. It's important to him. He practices hard. Um, you know, and so I, I thought that that play yesterday. You know, he tried to tried to stab the guy at the line and gets beat off the line, and and uh, then gets back into phase and is able to make that play. That was huge. And then uh, to finish off with the pick at the end, I thought was really good. He he's really been a solid tackle for us. Um, that's critical for any young DB to be willing to stick your nose in there, and Cam has done that for us. And so I was happy with how he played. Is there a difference between sustaining success and having that initial success? Well, I think winning in this league is extremely difficult. And you can't look far down the road. You just got to look at the next game in front of you. And I think that's what this team has always done is who is in front of us? What do we got to do to beat them? Okay, we did it. What do we got to do next week? And so it hasn't really been about sustaining success for us. It's just about how do we win the next game. And next thing you know, you've you've won 10. And um, then you just focus on the next one. You, you try to be one to know the next week. And that's that's really all this team's honed in on. When you look at that number, 10 wins in a row, I mean, what, what jumps out of your mind? You that we got to win 11 in a row. I mean, really, that's, that's all it is. you know. And, and again, looking back, had we won any fewer than that, who knows where we would be. And so that's what we had to do, and that's that's what our guys have done. There's going to be a lot of conversation this week about having to beat a team four times in a row and how difficult might that be. What, what are your thoughts on that? we got to beat them one time in a row. You know, it really – those other games, uh, obviously there's there's more familiarity personnel-wise amongst both teams now. We obviously understand the environment we're walking into. That doesn't hurt. 
Um, but at the end of the day, um, it feels like we played them a really long time ago. It feels like – I mean, I, I, I don't even know how many games ago it was, to be quite honest with you. I don't even know what month it was in. But, um, you know, teams continue to evolve. And, and different strengths pop up, different weaknesses pop up. And so you got to do the whole game planning thing all over again and then get your guys ready to go and play in a tough environment against a great team. So what do you make of the narrative that it might be tough to beat a team four times a week? I don't make anything of it. You know, we just – all we got to do is find a way to, to be prepared for Sunday and, and win this one. On Jackson on tape. I thought Jackson did a nice job. I thought, you know, his first game uh, playing tackle for us, he, he, did a, he did a really good job when you put it in that, um, that perspective. And was physical, finished, um, thought he was confident. I thought that was, that was good to see from, from, uh, from Jackson. This has been a season-wide trend for you guys, but taking the ball first and scoring, I mean, what does that open up for you guys and how you can – the rest of the game for the last, you know, 55 minutes or whatever. Well, if you can start with a lead, um, that's significant, you know, because you're allowed to, you know, feel like you got initial control of the game early on, and, and your defense can come out there, and they've got they've got a lead to play off of, and um, it gives you something to build off of quickly, especially if your defense gets to stop. We lost the coin toss, so we didn't have much choice, but um, I think our, our guys have a lot of confidence that um, we can start fast and be aggressive early on. And uh, our guys just did a great job executing early on. How much of a mental boost is that when you take a lead? I mean, Josh Allen took the field yesterday, and they were already down by a touchdown. Grant three plays down by two touchdowns. I mean, how much of a mental boost is that for your offense and your defense kind of playing from a strength? From a it, it's certainly a good thing. You know, to, to have an early lead does give your team confidence. At the same time, it can be a bit of a reaction because it, it is a long game, and anything can change. And um, but I'd rather have a seven to nothing lead than a zero to seven trailing. So. What, is there any significance to you choosing to send out Tyler Boyd? I guess he gets the coin toss yesterday. I just think those are two guys that have represented us really well and um, taken us through, you know, some really hard times. Those are two guys that look at one on offense, one on defense, that have been here since a lot of these coaches walked in the door and and just been consistent and represented this franchise the right way and the city the right way and. Um, just thought, you know, it's we're, we're walking into a tough environment. These guys have, have gotten us through a lot of tough moments, tough environments, and just kind of appreciation for those two guys. You all went through a lot of struggles those first two years as a staff. What, what made you confident that Louie and Arundel could be a long-term DC for you after those first two years? Just because you can see the vision um, of what he was he was trying to get going. And, and it takes time to, to iron out the wrinkles in the scheme. It takes time to, to place the personnel how you want it. It takes time to um, let guys grow in the scheme. And I think that's just um, it requires patience sometimes for all of our phases we've had here, for every, everything in this um, that we've had, that we've done. Scheduling everything has, has required patience, and we've gotten that. And you can see what happens when, when you get patience. And um, it's just it's, it's an awesome thing to see. Are there any traits that, that he has that could make for him potentially be a good head coach? Yeah, he'd be a great head coach. He's um, extremely smart. Um, he's got the players' best interests in mind. He wants to put them in their best positions to succeed. It's not about this is the scheme and we're just going to do it, whether it fits the guys or not. Um, he's constantly evolving it to make sure that we're putting our guys in position to do the things that, that hit their strengths. He does a great job adjusting over the course of the week, over the course of the game. It's not fun probably being a defense coordinator in the AFC you got to face just a new, <laughs> uh, you know, every week's a challenge. And he never blinks. I think the players feel that from him. I know I feel that from him. He's always going to be prepared and, and give our guys a chance to go play well. Talking to the guys inside the locker room yesterday, a couple of the big talkers were the refund of the tickets and the stat you talked about with Jake. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> As a coach, look, you're 20 weeks into the season. Are, are you looking for small things to, to rally this team? I take whatever I can get. And, um, yeah, it's probably the opposite of what people – yeah, 20 weeks in, I'm absolutely looking for anything. You know, week one's easy. Uh, week 20, uh, you'll take anything you can get. And uh, I'll search every inch of the internet to get it. So do you – when you did the Gladiator thing a couple weeks ago, you did PowerPoint with the stats. I mean, do you at the end of the week like come up with like PowerPoint ideas every week and then have somebody – I think we've done one PowerPoint in four years. Um, 
I don't know if there's a PowerPoint. It just appeared on the screen. Um, <laughs> Brooke, was Brooks ran it. The first time you did that, then? Um, I've shown pictures before. We've shown videos before. We've shown film before. Most of the time, there's nothing. It's just speaking. Um, we've had guest speakers, Mark Duffner. Um, we, we've varied, you know, just kind of how the week goes, what you think the messaging needs to be, who needs to deliver it, how it needs to be delivered. Um, that's just kind of Friday night or Saturday morning. Happens. It's something that's on my mind oh, all the week, but but you you do a better job honing in on it as it gets closer. When, knowing how regimented, how full your week has to be as a head coach, do you have to carve out time to search the internet for, for things? <laughs> Um, it's not always that way. You know, there's other times there's just messaging you want to portray. Other times um, you're on a flight or traveling on a bus, and that's kind of the time. You know, you look at Saturday, and that's usually that's the most amount of my time where you get a chance to really dial in on it. You might have some ideas floating around in your head, and then, and then you get it dialed in as it gets closer. You, you, prompted, uh, you prompted Duff to say, got you got to Oh yeah. Is the thirteen and two an ad lib? I didn't that? prompt anything from Duff ever. Just so we're all clear, I may have prompted him after the fact to keep it going. Uh, that was all genuine, Mark Duffner. Um, he he mentioned to me that he had something else he wanted to say going into this one. I had a feeling what it was probably going to be, and uh, I had a little more more I wanted to say. He he jumped the gun a little bit uh, to provide the proper context, but. Um, he just brings such great energy. That's critical. You know, we always talk about the makeup of the staff and Mark Duffner. Um, you got to have Duff. You know, he, he brings so much energy every day. He's consistent. Um, those guys, not only those, those, those guys that he deals with have so much respect for him, but the whole team, the whole coaching staff, um, you know, we're lucky to have Duff. We've seen you move Jamar in and out of the backfield from time to time this year. That might have been the most yesterday. What, what's the biggest benefit to – having him back there as opposed to slot out wide or whatever it might be? Well, it can be a challenge. You're, you're at times changing the, the passing strength, you know, with him in the backfield. So then they got decisions they got to make um, about how they want to treat that. So sometimes it can prevent matchups. Sometimes it can, can mess you up. The first time we played Baltimore, it, it didn't put us in a great position. Um, so you got to be, you, you got to be mindful of what you're doing there. We felt like we had a good package that we could utilize. Um, some different varieties of the package. Some games that's up, some games it's not. Uh, but again, he's he's proven to us that he can he's he's capable of understanding anywhere we want to put him, and he can he can do it. Whether it's just catching a bubble and making people miss and getting a first down out of nothing, really. Um, that's just that's the weapon we got with Jamar, and so you got to find ways to be creative and utilize him. With, with, going back to Lou, the guys always talk about being this mad scientist and experiment with different things. When you do that with Jamar. Is there an experimental element to it where you're waiting to see how it stresses the defense, how they react, or is, do you, is there a specific design for every reason, or specific reason every time you put him back there? There's an initial part of the package that there's reasoning for doing it, and then there's things you need to carry to complement that. Sometimes you get to it, sometimes you don't. Um, and so, again, whether we carry that every week or not, um, it's more dictated by the scheme that they're going to present on defense, whether that gives us an advantage or not. But um, there's the, the initial intent is always we think we can stress them this way, and then and then you got to build off of that and be ready for some adjustments they could make. Um, so that, that's there's a lot that goes into it. I feel what, like. What would be your coaching point to him on the one toss that he did get? The, the he kind of didn't really hit. What would be your coaching point to him? On he's that? he's waiting to set up his blocks. You know, I I, w I would I wouldn't um, say that he didn't hit it. I think he was he was kind of waiting to see how it sorted out there on the perimeter, and um, you know we still got a couple yards out of it. How, how do you feel like going through all of this last year may benefit y'all now that you're going through it basically the second time around almost in identical fashion? It does. It does benefit you. You know, it's not kind of oh my God, we're in the AFC Championship game. It's it's more we're we're in the AFC Championship game. This is where we expect it to be. Um, we just we, we know all that it entails, and our guys are excited for the opportunity, and they've worked really hard to put themselves in this position. Um, we're certainly not done yet. There's a lot more work to go. It's not just okay, we made it, we're good. It's we got. Joey's already told me there's great energy this morning in the weight room. Um, guys are already locked in and, and ready to get to practice, and I'm excited to hear that. How different is that when it's you know it, it's not like you said, oh we're here, but this is an expectation. We expect to be playing it this week of the year. How different is that mindset as you go into not just this game, but the playoffs in general, like, you know, what kind of what is ahead of you? 
well, again, I, I think that's the makeup of the team. That's that's why a lot of guys are here because they've always had that mentality from your research and their scouting profiles from college, pro teams. You've always tried to prepare to have a team ready for this moment so you can capitalize on it as quickly as possible. And I thought last year we did, again, because of because of the mindset of a lot of the guys. And then this year it's it's been there, done that. We know we know how hard this is to get here, and we know how hard it's going to be to keep moving forward. And so, again, there's no relaxing of man. We just want a, a tough road game. We can take a deep breath. They know it's the exact opposite, and so that's that's good to know as a coach. So, knowing the environment that you're going into in Arrowhead, having been there last year, the fans that are traveling, where do they make the most impact? Is it the noise in the stadium? Is it on the as you guys go to the hotels, you go around to the stadium? Is it the catchphrases that you guys utter, that you put on your T-shirts? What is it that helps you guys? No, you, you notice them a lot. Um, you notice it when, when the team runs out of the tunnel, our team runs out of the tunnel, and you can kind of hear, hear – because they get there early. Typically when our fans travel, they're there early. So it might be when the quarterbacks are coming out, you know, an hour before to start warming up, you can feel, uh, man, there's a lot of Bengals fans here. You know, and so th- that's kind of where I tend to notice it more. Um Usually when I'm busing to the game, I'm looking for the other team's fans. That's that's part of the NFL experience. It's awesome. I, I thought that bus ride into Buffalo. I thought last year's bus ride into Kansas City was the best one I've ever had. I thought this one yesterday in Buffalo was tied for it. It's just the support of those organizations and how early they get there to tailgate and support. And um, we certainly feel that from our fans. Our fans are, are – but just in terms of road games – um, it's a blast. You know, it's it's what you sign up for when you play and coach in this league and um, impossible to replicate. I was sitting next to Brian on the bus driving in, and, and you're just smiling from ear to ear watching these fans do all sorts of things to the bus um, from afar. And it's like you cannot replicate this feeling. You can't bottle this up. And so it's, it's – you can't replicate it. You just have to experience it, and it's pretty cool. I felt like Mike Hilton yesterday was pretty noticeable, especially on the – Yeah. He's just uh, he's he's the best nickel in all football, you know. And he's savvy, he's instinctive, he's physical. Um, he's got great coverage ability. He can make plays on the ball and come up with the ball when he gets his opportunities. Um, he's a fearless rusher. You know, a lot of guys are tentative um, when their numbers called. He does just a great job complimenting all of his his looks. And so then when he when he gets a chance to pull the trigger and come, he makes the most of it. You know, and and uh, just knowing, having played against all sorts of corners and safeties and nickels that pressure, a lot of them, as soon as they get blocked, it's kind of over. He's, he's the opposite. You know, he's going to keep fighting through it and find ways to put pressure on the quarterback so they can feel his presence and uh, just really instinctive player that way. Some of your guys that are from the South and played in the South, played in the snow for the first time, and were saying how much fun it was. Mm-hmm. Lamar's phrase was, it was fun as hell. Mm-hmm. Did you sense that these guys were not only going to be able to handle it, but were getting a kick out of that? Uh, no, no, I, I really didn't. I didn't think too much about that. Um, I've only really been a part of uh, maybe one snow game in my lifetime, you know. So it's not as it's not as common as people probably think. Maybe more so in Buffalo, obviously. But um, I think I played one in Pittsburgh in 2013 with Miami, and that's the only one that really comes to mind for me. So. It's kind of a new experience for for everybody, whether you're from the South or went to school in Nebraska. You know, I think the snowflakes fell one time when I was playing in college um, at the end of the game. So it's it's not as common as people people probably think. And so it was a new experience for all of us. It was a cool experience. You know, when you watch the tape and you can barely see some of the plays, it's and you've won. Um, it's it's you know it's a pretty neat deal. Did you get a, did you get a chance to see uh, Jamar? I mean, I, I did not. Game. No, I did not. I, I'm aware he was there. I I didn't. Um, I didn't see any of that. With Patrick Mahomes, how, how much is mobility, avoiding rush, extending plays a big part of his game when you coach against him? Well, it is a big part of his game, but I also saw it show up in the second half of the last game against Jacksonville. Um, he's a great competitor. He's he's tough as nails. Um, so, again, he's – you don't also want to assume he's not going to move around when I just watched him move around, you know, and so um, – He's deadly. He can throw from all arm angles and make plays, and plays can break down, and, and he's going to get on the same page with his guys and make plays. And so um, you got to go into it with the mindset that, that he's going to be the same player he always has been. Hayden Hurst was telling me yesterday that at this time last year, he was in Florida 
I watched you guys make the run you made for mm-hmm. the Super Bowl. And he was like, man, I wish I could just be a part of that. And with him being a part of that, how much does that make other guys want to be just as invested in him as he is in you? I mean, that was, you know, that's that's something we, we talked about yesterday before the game is there's 24 teams that are watching the televisions that are watching you guys play and, and envious of the opportunity you guys have. Um, I remember being on vacation in 2020 down in West Palm and texting Joe Shane, who was with the Bills, how jealous I was watching NFL Network and watching them practice, you know, their little warm-ups that you guys would film and stuff. And um, I'm looking at the ocean, you know, and I'm jealous that I don't get to be in the snow practicing, getting ready for, you know, the divisional round. And um, so I, I know that feeling. Um, I know how bad I wanted to be a part of what the other teams are doing. And so I, I can understand what Hayden felt last year. And, and uh, that, that's that's great. You know, if, if that helps us in the future, that's awesome. Just following up on that, you were talking about how it's like week 20, maybe week 21. For you as the head coach, I know you're really good about giving the players Mondays and Tuesdays off. But for you, just like you were talking about the years that you weren't in the playoffs, does looking around, seeing the team that you have this year, knowing what you went through last year, does that give you an extra maybe boost to make sure that you you're still have all the energy you need? I mean, I know you guys just yeah. get up for playoffs like this, but it is week 22. Like, how do you stay as sharp as It's the playoffs. Can? It's like you started over. It really is. It's, it's you know, each week, um, if you don't handle it the right way, it could be your last. And so – um, it really does. When, when you get to the playoffs, there, there's a just a new energy that that hits you, and you got to be mindful of the players because they're the ones who go through the physical aspect of it. I think as coaches, we've we've done a good job managing our time over the course of the year and not burn ourselves out. Um, this week's no different, but it, it, there is just a renewed sense of energy of man. We got to make sure we have our best six days, and if we can get over this hump, we'll do it again. And and um, that's that's just kind of the mindset right now.